Hey, this is Matt. Once again, we're about to end the video. This is the other paid request. Uh, thanks once again, Devante. Um, I didn't even realize this was in two parts, but by the end I did. And Vante was nice enough to go, by the way, here's a... I really do appreciate it, Vante. Thank you so much. So this will be reacted to part two of the E! True Hollywood Story Curse of Poltergeist. The guy Luis had separating the two parts and this part's 35 minutes and 29 seconds is in the middle of talking about poltergeist 2 so you know what i'll upload in two parts as well so that if you want to follow along you can click on the first part and follow the first part you click on the second part and follow the second part and so on and so forth so i have a, the second part up it is 35 minutes and 30 seconds Three, two, one, pressing play. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And yeah, we're 14 seconds in. But yeah, so they're talking about the. The make your poltergeist too. <laughs> so they're in that. The finale, when they're in that sort of cave system, there are issues going on with that. Will Simpson said there were alien spirits? Skeletons used in the movie were real. Well, I mean, yeah, if you work with real cadavers, you're like, these are effects guys. They can make a fake body. It's like this one idiot who, when I review Bad Boy Bubby, and I'm like, oh, this is like a real dead cat they use. It's like, well, you're Snowflake. I'm a Snowflake because I don't want a real dead cat on the damn screen being used for a stupid sequence and a stupid movie when there's effects you could make for it. Okay, fine. Maybe I don't think you need to use real dead bodies and real dead cats. We got effects. So what makeup effects are for. <laughs> kind of like Craig T. Nelson maybe believes in it but doesn't want to admit it because he doesn't want to look like he's crazy but yeah Will Sampson did this cleansing and production went without a hitch and oh wow Anna Nicole Smith I forgot she had a TV show I mean she's no longer around but I mean, this is stuff you had the Kardashians, all that stuff, so. The Anna Nicole show. Man. That was a thing. Okay, this has uh, commercials. Which is cool. I like commercials. I don't know why. Maybe because. Oh, no, never mind. No more commercials, but. 
commercial is like a nice window to the past. These are type of products people were utilizing, type of music. But, I mean, with the making of films, there's probably a lot of movies that have a lot of issues going on, a lot of problems. It's just, they were not horror films dealing with the paranormal. So when it's done with that, then you could just link it up to some kind of poltergeist activity. It's about poltergeist, so maybe it's poltergeist. But if it was like Bad Boys, you know, or Con Air, or even, you know... The new Suicide Squad film, people will be less talking about there was some curse. It's about Julian Beck, who is very effective in that role in Poltergeist 2. He's definitely one of the things people remember the most in Poltergeist 2. Is his character. I did, like, this Curse of Poltergeist, you actually get a making of the films, because, like, they're talking to the director, Brian Gibson, like, said, Craig T. Nelson, Joe Beth Williams, Zelda Rubenstein, Rubenstein, uh, Heather Ward's mom. You did, you probably did more of a making of than the special, you know, the DVDs, Blu-rays and stuff. Now that we are in the final stretches of completing Poltergeist 2, I really want to thank you for all your wonderful help over the last 19 months. You've been a help. Okay. Try to read the rest of that letter. Yeah, I mean, it's sad to hear about Julian Beck, but like I say, he gave a very memorable performance.
Yeah, I apologize to you, didn't do as well as the first. Dude, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad of a film. It's not as good as the first one, but it's a lot better than the third. Like I said, there's some good practical effects in there. The family unit, they do a good job acting-wise. Like, Julian Beck was a wonderful addition, as well as Will Sampson. I love the creature, like, after the Craig Nelson, the vomit thing. This really creepy-looking creature. So these doctors sucked, pretty much. These doctors fucked up. Oh, that's mean to say. Well, I mean, it's funny how doctors, after the fact, found out what it was, but... They did fucking House MD. I mean, and then people talk about the curse. Well, nothing happened to Craig T. Nelson. Ha nothing happened to Joe Beth Williams. Nothing happened to the boy or your Robbie. <laughs> that was a nice interesting story Craig T. Nelson told about he visited the the grave site and there's a bunch of cicadas he said hey Will and then the cicadas silenced and said ah come on man I mean you know I mean if you experience something like that it's like it would make you think twice about you know maybe there's something more to it Maybe there's something more to it. <clears throat> they want another movie, but you're not going to have Craig T. Nelson and Joe Beth Williams. It's like, nope, no money on this one. I mean, if Craig T. Nelson went through the stuff with the effects guys and then all the problems in the the set in the finale, you got Derry Sherman. Yeah, Derry Sherman, they mentioned he did Wanted Dare Alive with Roger Hauer, which is a film I do enjoy. That's with Gene Simmons as the villain. I 
But yeah, I mean, it's under. I mean, I didn't to them like the little girl was like the most prominent role, so. Tom Steer, of course, from Alien. And then Nancy Allen from Robocop. I mean, yeah, I remember Nancy Allen in 87, Robocop came out. So then, okay, here's a movie that's going to be in the theaters, that's going to be seen by people thinking, hey, it's a sequel to a film people remember and a at this point successful franchise. So whether people like it or don't, they're gonna see me and they don't hope that's a hit and that's gonna to lead to other movies because hey, you put that title, people recognize the title or they recognize it as a hit, then whether you had a hand in it or not, go on to other roles in movies. And the thing with Poltergeist 3 is just a film that didn't need to be made. I mean... And I, there still is room to make a really good haunted house in a skyscraper. This film tried to do it. There was a movie with called The Dark Tower. Was it called Dark Tower or Dark... It was with the... Uh, the guy from the stuff, Michael. Wow, my brain is really going. Did you, again? There just hasn't been a good haunted house, like skyscraper type of movie, despite the attempts. Just the thing with the skyscraper, because there's so much stuff to play around with. With uh, how high you are and the variety of different floors. Underwater catapult. Well, yeah, it's an underwater catapult. That's not a regular thing that's been done before. I mean, think about all the troubles on Jaws. Like, look up the tr look up the production of Jaws. Look at the production of Heaven's Gate. That movie. There's a lot of problems on Jaws and Heaven's Gate. A lot of issues, but it's not like they said there was a curse on it. And it makes for an interesting story, though. Hmm. But 
But as for the movie itself, I thought... I didn't care for the way they utilized Zelda Rubenstein. I didn't care for... Pretty much they killed the character off. I mean, that's the best way to put it. Because Heather Ward passed away, the ending and the way it just has this weird off feel to it. Which, I think there's an alternate scene where Heather Ward is part of the ending. And for some reason they got rid of that. So then the last scene is an a double who's hiding her face. And you know subconsciously why that's happening. Because I, th I think she was finished with her work, but... Following the death of Heather Ward in February 88, after she finished her work on the film, planning for the reshoot began December 87, continuing January 88, but put on when Heather Ward died February 1st. The reshoot, which used to stand for Heather, eventually took place in March, and the film was then re-edited and given to PG-13. I'll tell you, the film was given a PG rating by the MPA. The studio had already decided to have Sharon reshoot the ending with the more graphic scenes in order to up the rating to PG-13. Later, the director said no reshoot took place, instead of insisting that Heather died before they could film the original ending, and that the current ending using the body double is what they hastily threw together when forced to finish the film. He is contradicted by at least six other people who also worked on the film, who confirmed that the original ending was in fact filmed before Heather died, and that the reshoot of the ending took place after her per passing. The producer, actor Tipley Wentz, assistant editor, composer, special effects, makeup artist, and the man who provided the voice for the Reverend Kane, Corey Burton. His claims would also be proven false by the Clutch's edition Blu-ray, where the original film elements and the missing footage were discovered in a vault for a 4K restoration, including the original ending where Sherman denied ever existed. So yeah, the director was full of shit. Why he was full of shit? Maybe it's like, this is the ending I prefer... But people don't think I'm an asshole because I didn't use Heather Ward, I used a double, but this is the ending I prefer. I do like that they actually go into the making of the film. It's not just about the curse elements. They go, they do go into the behind the scenes and some of these other sequences. Like shooting Up So High, the interview with Nancy Allen. The frozen garage scene. Which is interesting visual, but I do wish it was in a better movie. I do wish it, wish it was in a better, with better material. It just, the script, Heather Ward dying, I didn't, so they did shoot that ending with Heather Ward. You should just use that, at the very least, because Heather Ward, her last moments on film, instead you watch the film, and again, it's this awkward double hide her face, so it just, really fucking stupid, so... Darian Sherman, you're an idiot. And you're a liar. That Eddie doesn't exist. It was never finished. Well, six people said you're full of shit, and then the Blu-ray said you're full of shit, because it's right there. So why are you so full of shit, Darian Sherman? Take a Sherman tank up your fucking ass, you fucking dumbass. You make a shitty Poltergeist film, then you fucked up the sh ending... And put a shittier ending with no Heather Ward and an obvious double, which just makes it awkward to watch at the end. And like Nancy Allen's character is very unlikable, and then her change of mind of, oh yeah, I like Heather, I like Carol Ann. You don't buy it. There's some interesting visual elements with mirrors, but again, wish she was in a better movie, better script, without the tragedy as well.
George, this is about the fire that happened. Wasn't there a Star Trek film where the set got on fire? One of the, the original six movies? Was it Star Trek 2 or... I can't remember. I thought one of them, there was like a big fire that happened. Maybe not. There's been other films that has happened where... I think Legend. Legend with Tom Cruise. There's a big fire with that. Which they lost a lot of shit with that. So yeah, Legend had that. But no one's saying Legend was cursed. But again, it's because it's part of the poltergeist legacy is part of the poltergeist like the remake they did the remake nothing happened with the remake they did the tv show remember the tv show so that's the thing when you put in the tv show the legacy you put in the remake maybe say it killed people's careers <laughs> well but there's a lot of crappy movies that done that and as I say, if you think poltergeist 3 is bad which it is the remake is even worse and like that one credit, no, Poltergeist 2 wasn't a Xerox. You want to see a Xerox? Watch the remake. That's a Xerox. And again, I'm not going to say Poltergeist 2 is this perfect 5 out of 5 star movie. Far from it. But I think it's at least a 3, 3.5 three out of 5 star movie. At least. Ah, that is very sad. But yes, she did. She did get the chance because the film was done. You know, in the past, I will admit, I've like, oh, what's up with the parents? But if the mom went to all these doctors, and you're supposed to listen to the doctors, because they're supposed to know more, and the doctors say all this other stuff, and cortisone, and all this other stuff, you know, what's the mom supposed to do? You go to doctors, they're supposed to know what the hell you're talking about. So... Yeah, it's not the I don't I'm not going to blame the mom. I think I did in the past without knowing much about it, but again, throughout the time, septic shock. I blame the doctors for not knowing what the fuck they were doing.
I still don't understand why why he lied about the whole ending thing. When it was shot, it was finished, and you decided not to use it. And you used an ending with a this double. Still don't understand that. But it was finished, you fucking liar. It was finished. Because it was, you fucking lying sack of shit. No, what happened was, you shot the movie, it was finished, the studio said, you know what, we want to make this a PG-13, can you punch up the ending? And I like, okay, we'll do it, and... Maybe that reshoot ending, it's like... How I put it? Maybe it was... I don't know how to explain it. I mean, just be honest. And, I mean, he was saying... I don't know. I read it before what had happened. And that's what I buy more into it. The current ending using the body that was what they hastily threw the other one forced to finish the film by MGM... It died before they could film the original ending. But again, six people said no. The original ending was in fact filmed before Heather died. And this reshot to an ending after her passing. Why would he get the guy who wrote and directed your box office bomb to work on the TV show? I mean, both of you legacy, you last four seasons, that's decently successful.
Sorry, I'm just still thinking about Zelda saying bullshit to all that. And that's getting to the end of the Curse of Poltergeist. Again, you get more interesting information on this than you do on, especially the first Poltergeist, the, the special edition, special edition that barely has anything on it. And that's why people don't just don't watch this for the behind the scenes and interviews and, and so forth. It's well put together. I remember at the beginning of the first part, I'm like, two hours? This is only 52 minutes. And I, it's been a while since I've seen this, because I know I've seen this before, but it's been so long, I forgot. It was a two-hour program, but then with 30-minute with commercials, makes sense, an hour and a half. And I'm like, oh, there is a part two. Okay. So, that was my screw-up. That was my mess-up. But, Vante, thank you so much. It was interesting to give this a watch again. And, yeah, it's... One of those things that is definitely interesting. And there's a lot of, you know, sad things that happen during the course of the making of that movie. And trilogy, I should say. Is there an actual curse? I mean, maybe some weird things happen, but... I mean, you look at Heaven's Gate. Look at all the stuff that happened during that. You look at, like I said, Jaws. You know, people thought the making of Jaws was terrible. I mean, sadly, there are people that die. I mean, action films. Triple X with Vin Diesel, you had someone who sadly died. And a lot of other action films. Even was it Deadpool? Was it Deadpool 2? Stump Person died? I mean, the, the Chuck Norris films. I mean, just sadly, that is the, the case in the that business. And, uh, do I think it's a curse? No. I think there's a lot of unfortunate circumstances that if the same thing happened, but it was die-hard franchise or missing action trilogy, like, if you took the Chuck Norris missing action trilogy and the film broke down, and this co-star died, and uh, this person got the role, even though he had cancer. People would not think of anything of a curse. And because it's a horror film, because it's called Poltergeist, it gets much more of that imagination looking into it, running away with you. But, anyway. With that said, thanks once again, Vante. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.